Hi there, I'm Craig Wilson. I'm the Curator of History for Mackinac State Historic Parks, and today I'd like to look at another image out of the photo album of Lieutenant Edward Pratt. Now remember, Pratt was assigned to Fort Mackinac with the 23rd Regiment of Infantry from 1884 to 1890, and this image is titled Companies E and K Going to Parade. So what we see here are both of the companies marching out through the North Sally Port, uh, and if you visited Fort Mackinac via a carriage tour or just walked up to the north side and come in through the Avenue of Flags, you'll note that the fort isn't a whole lot different today than it was when this photo was taken. Now, as we look at the soldiers, you'll notice that they are all wearing their dress uniforms. They are going to participate in some sort of special event. Again, it's titled Going to Parade. It's unclear if that is an actual parade that they're going to be marching in, or if they're just using parade to refer to some sort of special full dress occasion. But as you look at the soldiers, you can see that those dress uniforms are quite elaborate. They involve a long frock coat. The officers have double-breasted frock coats. The enlisted men just have a single row of buttons on the chest. And all of the soldiers wear a very elaborate spiked helmet. It's very European looking. There's a lot of German influence in it, but also some British influence in the design of this helmet, which the American army actually wore for about 20 years at the end of the 19th century. So just kind of moving left to right, uh, at the very head of the column, we can see the company musicians. They have their bugles up, ready to sound a call. The musicians are denoted by two stripes on their trouser legs, as well as all of that white braiding on the chest of their dress coats. They also do carry musicians' swords, which are just kind of a ceremonial weapon to mark their status. So as we look behind those company musicians, we can see the column of enlisted soldiers, and there are a few officers sprinkled in here as well at the head of the companies. The officer who is at the head of that first group of soldiers, that may be Pratt. It bears a passing resemblance to him. Unfortunately, it's just really too hard to say conclusively. But right next to that officer, we can see the company first sergeant, again denoted by that triple chevron and diamond on the sleeve of his dress coat. And if you look just beneath that rank insignia, you can see some slash marks uh, lower down on his sleeve. Those are service stripes, though those indicate the completion of a term of enlistment, which in the 1880s would have been five years. Uh, and so as you look down the row of men, you'll see other soldiers with more of those service marks. And that really indicates that some of these soldiers had truly made a career out of the army. As you look at some of the other soldiers, you may also notice a few of them wearing medals or small badges on their uniform coats, and those are most likely related to marksmanship. In the 1880s, the Army had uh, a very well-developed marksmanship program, and to really encourage soldiers to take that seriously, they had a whole variety of awards that could be awarded. Uh, they had uh, just a plain marksman bar, uh, and then they also had a sharpshooter medal and you can actually see some of the men wearing a few of those things in this photo. Now unfortunately we can't actually see these soldiers carrying them but if you look on the other side of the column of soldiers you can see two faint images of American flags uh, and those are the small markers that would have been carried with each company. Uh, they're kind of flapping in the wind in this photo, but they're just there along with some of the other soldiers. For instance, it, there appears to be a corporal standing off to the left of the front end of the column to act as guides. They would just help keep the soldiers in formation as they marched along. So though it's very difficult to conclusively identify most of the soldiers in this photo, the second officer from the right who's standing very near the camera, that's almost certainly Captain Greenleaf Goodale. Uh, Goodale actually commanded Fort Mackinac from 1886 to 1890, and he acted not only as the military commander of the fort, he was also the superintendent of the Mackinac National Park that existed on the island at that time. To just kind of wrap things up, as we look at the fort itself, again, the big stone wall is unchanged from the wall that you might see if you go visit the fort today. Uh, we've reconstructed a palisade on top of it. You'll note in the 1880s, there was just a little white picket fence up there. They really were not concerned about any sort of attack. 
Uh, and also at the left end of the wall, you'll see a building just outside. Uh, that would be the Post Bakery. That's one of many buildings that actually existed outside the stone walls at the end of the 19th century. That unfortunately is no longer there. So that's just a quick look at another image out of the Pratt photo album. Again, this image and all the rest of the Fort Mackinac images and a variety of other images from the rest of Pratt's Army career uh, is going to be available for sale in published form in a book that I've written called Through an Officer's Eyes, the Photo Album of Edward B. Pratt, U.S. Army, 1873 to 1902. That again will be on sale at our museum stores and visitor centers later this summer. And we do hope that you get a chance to come visit us here at Mackinac and take a look at what some of these locations look like today. 